why owning 0.21 Bitcoin is a big deal. Regular people can participate in Bitcoin right now. Owning 0.21 Bitcoin puts you in, you are an influential Bitcoiner. You talk to a regular person on Bitcoin Twitter, a regular person on Bitcoin YouTube, all 100 to 99% of their long-term money is now in Bitcoin. Sitting here today, you can direct deposit your paycheck to Bitcoin and bill pay via an account and routing number today. Bitcoin personal finance strategies are gonna be a combination of direct depositing to Bitcoin, holding either zero or some amount of fiat, taking some fiat loans against your Bitcoin, and then direct bill paying with Bitcoin. Once you adopt Bitcoin, every Bitcoiner mm-hmm. is all of a sudden working for you. If Michael Saylor acquires more Bitcoin because he has done good in his business, that's good for every Bitcoiner. The tool set is already here for me as an individual to effectively hold zero fiat and still live my life. Bitcoin is happening right now in real time. It's not a vague thing that's happening in the future. I saw one really interesting thing because I did some videos on that, but not enough videos, I feel like. Uh, And it's a very popular topic. How many Bitcoin I should aim for? Uh, And I saw like you made like two or three videos even on that topic. Um, And I saw you pick the number uh, 0.21 and... There, there are like in, in the early days, it was like 6.1 because of the yeah. halving rewards stuff. Like, why did you put, uh, what's the, what's the vision for you for 0. Uh, 0. 0.21? Yeah. Yeah. So the why, so why owning 0. 0.21 Bitcoin is a big deal is the best YouTube video I've ever put out. It's the first time I've ever been over a hundred thousand on just, just talking and the, the reason why I put it out was because it, in the video, I'm talking about how like point, point to one Bitcoin is, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a five figure thousands of, I live in the United States. It's a, what is it on the spot right now? It's like $20,000, like, right. It's like, it's like somewhere between 10, $15,000, which is a good amount. Like that's a good amount of savings, great chunk of money but not world changing, not life changing. And it also doesn't give you influence. And in this video, I kept coming back to the word influence to where owning 0.21 Bitcoin puts you in, you are an influential Bitcoiner, but owning 10,000 to $15,000 of fiat, like you are not an influential person, unfortunately, like not an influential person financially in the global economy or the united states economy or anything and so that's what i was talking about in this video is it like it's really interesting to think about how much bitcoin you should own from a financial perspective and from an investment perspective totally like totally um but it's also interesting to think about bitcoin from this influence perspective and like 0.21 because there's 21 million just thinking this like 0.21 is just a great kind of initial handhold to really think about and so that's why that's why i picked that number and yeah, apparently a lot of people connected with that. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. Uh, the perspective also with influence and not with wealth. Uh, I like that. I never, never heard that before. And uh, just like I, I looked it up quickly, it is 13,300. Like it's, yep. it's a really uh, cheap actually to get now to 0.1, 0.21 Bitcoin. And as you said, like the, 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 this is kind of the game theory topic. Like the, the, the small nations could do that. El Salvador is kind of doing that with one mm-hmm. Bitcoin a day. That will be, I think, a really big deal. Uh, when, when the Bitcoin adoption is further down the line. And I mean, US maybe do, does it right now. They're moving coins away since Trump spoke about it. <laughs> I don't know what's yeah. going on there. Uh, then Germany sold theirs. Um, how do you see that? Is, is it the same thing for you also on a, on a nation state level? How do you see, um, now adopting Bitcoin as an absolutely game theory uh, advantage. Yeah, I th- I think it is fair on a country level to think about it too. Um, I'm trying to do the mental map right now of owning 0.21 puts you in, I think it's a top 100, 100 million. Yeah, so, the, so I like your question about countries. I kind of, I... Something that's about me, though, is like I always am trying to just like think about the person, like just because I think Bitcoin's so far, like it goes so fast into like macroeconomics or like rich people or like governments or hedge funds. And especially with the ETFs and stuff now, like it's always just like kind of that or whatever. There's there's always so there's a ton of content for people to like buy, you know, buy $10 a day at a time of like get started. And then there's all this stuff for like 
hedge funds and governments and like all this like stuff. And like, again, back to kind of like why I like the 0.21 is like $13,000, 0.21 Bitcoin is like, if you're just a regular, like quote unquote, middle class, just regular job, like person, 0.21 Bitcoin kicks you into like a new influence level. And now you're literally, the floor is you'll be the top 100 million people in the world. There's seven, eight billion people in the world, like hundred million, like you're now in the top. And then you can get into the whole like lost Bitcoin or again, all because the hedge funds are stacking so much more, you're like chunking up and up. But I just remember when I started watching, when I started watching Bitcoin YouTube back in 2015, I like, I love YouTube. Like I love what you do. I love talking on YouTube. I love sitting on the couch watching YouTube because that's where I learned about Bitcoin. I watched Tone Base in 2015. And so for someone right now today, that's just like, you know, got their wheels under them, stacking a little bit, like getting to point two one is a big deal. You don't have to think about what the hedge funds are doing or what the government's doing or what the whatever are doing because you yourself can like own that amount and have like an influential kind of like piece of the world now. So that's a, uh, yeah. I feel like also that's why um, a DCA strategy is so powerful because like for when we talk about the average person, not everyone has like now 15,000 laying around and not doing anything. Yeah. And if you have on a bank account, <laughs> you should definitely think about something investment because it's, it's, it's melting away. Um, and that's like DCA is, is so, so powerful. And you also sent me in the preparation that you want to talk about what bit, how the average person can live on a Bitcoin stand. And I think that topic is really interesting. Uh, how do you imagine like the, the, the average person now in the U S uh, can actually live on Bitcoin, uh, if, especially if they have a high, a conviction and a high um, percentage of their net worth uh, in Bitcoin. I mean, right now I have like a little bit over hundred percent. I'm, I want to come yeah. down to 95% yeah. again. Uh, but yeah. how do you imagine that? Yeah. So um, one thing I love talking about is again, kind of just regular people. Like I want to talk to just regular people that You've been orange pilled, right? You're here, you're learning about Bitcoin or have already learned about Bitcoin, been in it for you know a few years or a lot of years. That's fine. Like philosophically, Bitcoin is better than fiat. We know that. Like we're aligned on that. Bitcoin is better than fiat. But you still have a direct deposit that comes over via an ACH deposit, and you still have bill payments that have to go out to your mortgage payment, your rent payment, your credit card, or your car payment, or whatever. And these two things have been like balancing these two facts have been growing and growing for me like over these past like few years. And so both on a both on like a personal level, but also on a professional level. And so yeah, like I, I work at Foldapp now. Foldapp like fully, fully solves this within the United States. And so the concept of having Bitcoin as your main money, but being backwards compatible to be able to pay your bills via an account and routing number, receive a direct deposit via an account and routing number, I think is a radical thing. Because it can, because like Russell Kung tweeted, pay me in Bitcoin back in 2019. And so every, to your point of like DCA, like every, like, so Bitcoin became easier to buy. Everyone got on the DCA train, which is good and awesome. Everyone very quickly racked up to where a more than half of their like long-term savings is on Bitcoin. You talk to a regular person on Bitcoin Twitter, a regular person on Bitcoin YouTube, Oh, 100 to 99 percent of their long-term money is now in Bitcoin, and then even as early as 2019, people were starting to push the envelope of wanting to get paid in better money, paid in better money, paid in better money. But up until now, there's been a ceiling on how much you can direct deposit to Bitcoin because there's no way to bill pay from it. So Fold solves the bill pay cycle of that, and that's what can click more and more people into receiving more and more of their direct deposit in Bitcoin, more and more of their direct deposit in Bitcoin, and so. And then again, why that's positive is because it helps kind of like that regular person live on Bitcoin. Because one of the problems with Bitcoin interviews and Bitcoin podcasts and Twitter is I think it's always like, oh, that influencer over there can live on Bitcoin or, you know, that digital nomad can live on Bitcoin. Or yeah, if you live in El Salvador, you can live on Bitcoin. But but I like I could never do that. Like I live in the suburbs. I have a mortgage. I have kids. I have a regular job. Like there was that whole thing. And I'm I'm now at this I love the like I was scrolling your last couple of guests and this recurring theme was like, you can do it now. Like Bitcoin's happening now. Bitcoin is happening now. And so I'm dude, inject that into my veins. Like Bitcoin is happening now. 
Uh, absolutely, that's 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 so true, and um, it's it's happening now. But there's already this this um, th th there are so many obstacles right now. Like you you mentioned it with like you don't get paid in Bitcoin, you get paid in fiat. Uh, if you convert something in Bitcoin, and then we want to convert it back to to fiat, or you want to buy something with that, you have to probably pay capital gains tax on that. At least in most of the countries, sometimes it's like lower or less if you hold it more than one year. Uh, in Austria, unfortunately, not. Uh, is there is there like um, like I, my strategy is always like keep uh, the money that you don't need for your living expense in your Bitcoin wallet. Try to live like you don't ever touch it not in the next five, 10 years, and then live just on the money that you still have in your fiat account. In that way, you never sell your Bitcoin. You never have capital gains tax and you can just live on fiat and you can have a very small margin. And if you are a father, probably you need a, a bigger margin. If you're a father and you have a company, you even need, need a bigger margin. I'm 25, I'm self-employed. I need no yep. margin at all. <laughs> like, yep. I have a way yep. higher risk uh, tolerance. Um, so, so do you have any uh, any strategies here or like? To totally. I think you're exactly hitting on it. I think so. First off, personal finance is very personal, and so everyone's going to have a little bit different way of doing that. And I like that there's tons of different ways to do it. So, I, I think for a little bit, sometimes talking about Bitcoin personal finance advice can steer very quickly into kind of like like social signaling. And, and then it just turns into this like random competition between me and you of like who can be the bigger Bitcoin or whatever. And like what I, what I don't like or what I, what I like is that the concept of Bitcoin personal finance discussion and advice is actually ha is beginning to grow way past that to where it actually is more of a tactical conversation of just what is possible and what can you do. So with that in mind, the way that I tackled the whole capital gains issue is when previously, pre, in my previously, that was a mental barrier for me also because I'm, you know, lean libertarian, lean small government, lean whatever, like freedom as like, you know, as a lot of people do. And for that, for me, it was like, oh, paying capital gains taxes is like antithetical because that's like continuing, you know, a vision of the world that I don't want to foresee, right? And so it, this whole thing of, of keep your Bitcoin and tell such a future where Bitcoin replaces the dollar and that's like eventually overturned, right? Like that kind of very classic, classic thing. What I didn't, what's new now and what helped me click past this was owning Bitcoin, like having a capital gain means you made a gain. Like that's a good problem to have. So connecting back to the influence part, you know, you hold a person, a person holding Bitcoin instead of fiat and making a gain, it literally has more stored labor, more potential now underneath their future self than if they had held the fiat money. Like that's good. The, the more amount of Bitcoiners that can be the most amount of wealthy as possible means that the future that you and I are both interested in will happen as fast as possible. And so for me, that's the mental framework that changed combined with, again, the tools of Fold and other places like tracking the capital gains even faster so that people, do, so that it's not a headache. It's not a headache. You just receive a form the same way as you do with any other brokerage account and it you know, you can manage your taxes for you. And that's one place where Bitcoiners in the, and again, I'm, I'm a very like, I'm speaking very US centric and that's like on, on me, but you, like you have to kind of adopt the mentality of how wealthy people in the US kind of already are. And they're not afraid of that. Like they're not afraid of 30, 60, 90 minutes of like extra work a year or whatever. So it, I, my answer is like, it's worth it. And owning more Bitcoin for more days per year, aka living on Bitcoin instead of holding fiat, like is worth it, I guess. And so I don't, so I don't shy away from the fact that like there are capital gains taxes. It does increase the work just a little bit. I go immediately to the point of like, I had that mental blocker also, but it's worth it. And then to your point of different people in different like life stages, keeping a fiat reserve of like different levels. Totally. Like, Absolutely. And that's what's, that's what's positive about everyone being able to do it like a little bit differently. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the way I tackled the uh, taxes part. Is there, 
um, a room. I mean, it's a, it's a hard topic because it's with Celsius and FTX and, and the, the loan against Bitcoin kind of thing, uh, was kind of ruined by them. Uh, but maybe we can get to a stage where there are more mature products coming out and, and, and more mature companies coming with that out. Um, is loaning against the Bitcoin and just bringing the Bitcoin as collateral, uh, like you have my, I don't know if you have a big Bitcoin stack, but you're not a big yep. income guy. So maybe yep. you can get like five, 10 percent of your Bitcoin out, get some, uh, some of the life back because you know how much, how, how yep. valuable that Bitcoin is and you can maybe afford the interest rates. How do you see loaning against Bitcoin? Yeah. So I definitely think it'll be part of it. I definitely think it'll be part of it. I don't think it's a fully silver bullet. I think that there are going to, I, I think the personal, the Bitcoin personal finance strategies that are being kind of written in real time through conversations like this are going to be a combination of direct depositing to Bitcoin, holding, at least some, like holding either zero or some amount of fiat, taking some fiat loans against your Bitcoin, and then direct bill paying with Bitcoin. Any and all of those are going to be a thing because the like and the, the reason why i don't see it as a silver bullet is because i i'm i've never been able to fully connect with some of the videos that talk about how you just take the loan and then just as the exchange rate goes up you kind of just like roll it forward and roll it forward and roll it forward because i'm i'm like a decently like i've, I've done a decent amount of like real estate transactions on like use the home equity line of credit and like use that kind of stuff before and it's like just from everything i know about the way that a home equity line of credit works i like I'm not able to kind of envision this like rolling forward, rolling forward, rolling forward thing, at least forever. So that's why I don't, so is it a powerful tool? 100% absolutely. Do I see it as kind of like a day-to-day -day bill pay tool? Not, not super like, I guess not for all of your expenses, no. I think it's also a big thing, uh... Who, who you are like uh, it, it's so easy for someone like michael saylor to get a loan for like i don't know 0 0.1 percent of interest rates uh but the the story is a different one if you have to pay 10 percent 5 percent or 15 percent or maybe even 20 percent uh, uh on, a, on a credit so like uh, there, there's there's a lot of things to consider and a lot of variables um do, yeah. do you see a point where uh, or when do you see the point where we actually shift of bitcoin being actual medium of exchange actually uh recognized by yeah. everyone uh there's no capital gains tax on like people like yeah. just accepted in the stores uh like yep. a little bit the life in el salvador but maybe even more advanced than that in the whole world yep uh inside me and your lifetimes like my answer is like inside our lifetime i think that's gonna happen and and the reason and the reason why is because today sitting here today you can direct deposit your paycheck to bitcoin and bill pay via an account and routing number today. So even so me as like a regular person in the United States, the tool set is already here for me as an individual to effectively hold zero fiat like in my account and still live my life relatively conveniently being backwards compatible and being able to withdraw it to my own wallet to because yeah, withdraw it to my own wallet. So now I'm effectively like forwards compatible to paying people in Bitcoin. So I'm like, I'm lucky. I have a like weekly meetup at a bar here in LA. It's called uh, Grey Wolf Brewing Inland Empire. They take Bitcoin. And so if, if me as an individual can already like live on Bitcoin through these accounts and then have one location that I know of like next to me that's already taking it, I, I mean, inside our lifetime, it'll way increase from there. I think adoption rate is something that people uh underestimating they're like uh, it, it's not that fast but uh it's it, i i compare it to the landline phone versus the cell phone like wh mm -hmm. when was the point where we only had landline phones and maybe like one two people had like a smartphone or like a, a cell phone in their hands and then when was the point where it's super weird if you make a phone yeah. call with a landline phone and we are now so addicted to the cell phone like we we're coming from it's non-existing to we are inventing boxes to lock our phones up because we are too addicted to it. So yeah. that was like 10, 20 years. It was like super quick. And uh, Bitcoin 
gives you so much good uh, uh, advantages. So like 20 years is an interesting way. Like I always look at when will be a, a kind of a developed Bitcoin standard, like 20, 30 years from now. It's not impossible. Yeah. It depends on how, how history treats us. But I think it, it, it could be very quick uh, to do that whole uh, adoption uh, thing. Uh, no, absolutely. Um, I, think, and, I, I think very, very quick. Uh, absolutely. And you also mentioned real estate. Did you do um, some some real estate or like how do you see? <laughs> I think it's also a really interesting topic because I don't know how it's in America, but in Austria, real estate is kind of the personal life savings account for the middle class. <laughs> they, yep. they buy a house for 30 year loan and that's their, their, their savings account, uh, which will be really interesting because when you see those price valuations, what could uh, bit, uh, Bitcoin go through? Uh, all those, all those big part is like real estate has a big, big valuation. And that's because a lot of people save the money in, in, in real estate. So you, you did real estate and now switch to Bitcoin or how, how did this went? Yeah, no, great question. So no, I do it at the same time. And what I mean by that is just like my wife and I own our house, like, and we own our previous house. So we've, we've moved twice now. We kept the previous one as a rental. Um, in the United States, re owning your home, being a real estate, like, owning a primary residence and investing in real estate is the number one path to being a millionaire in the United States. Uh, like the most amount of people become a millionaire through that method. And there's a lot of reasons for that, but I do think there's a lot of similarities and things that Bitcoiners can learn from that concept. And so a couple of base things that I believe, like the reason why like interior square footage, like interior square foot, holding interior square footage is better than holding dollars. Like also holding Bitcoin is better than holding dollars because like structurally fiat doesn't work. And that's what Bitcoiners are so great at hammering. We're so great at hammering. And that's where, so structurally fiat dollars do not work. The other thing that's interesting about mortgages is mortgages are effectively, you know, government backed. Like the ability to get 90% leverage, a 90% loan on a finite asset. And the finite asset is like the concrete, the glass, the wood, like the human labor that goes into building it, like that is a very real tangible thing. And so the fact that you're able to get a 90% loan of printed fiat for that thing, I don't foresee that kind of reversing. Like I, a base case for me is I kind of see everything melting up together, whether it's the stock market, the real estate market and Bitcoin kind of like all melting up together. I think everything would have to be like very, very big before you kind of get the predicted kind of like Bitcoin eating other things kind of stuff, you know, like that, like that, the whole like Bitcoin removing the monetary premium from uh, home ownership is pretty hard for me to see. Like that, to me, that's honestly past the first question you asked me of the like, will Bitcoin, you know, transition into a dominant medium of exchange inside like our lifetime? I honestly believe that Bitcoin transitioning to a dominant medium of exchange would almost have to be a precursor before Bitcoin begins to like demonetize real estate. If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis, I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin, keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange and you can get a 5% discount with the code Robin at the checkout. Visit bitbox.swiss slash Robin to get your Bitbox. And if you really want to bulletproof your self-custody setup, your security setup, and maybe even your citizenship set up, you have to talk to the Bitcoin way. If you go to the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash Robin, you get a 30 minute free call where you can dive deep with them if your self-custody setup is secure, if your citizenship is secure or maybe might be improvable or your digital footprint in general is secure. They are the experts in cybersecurity, in Bitcoin self-custody and how to be a secure, sovereign, 
individual in general. And last but not least, I have something completely new for you guys. I partnered up with Coin Vigilante. This is the most beautiful Bitcoin timepiece that I ever saw created by anyone. Look at that beauty. I love it so much. Coin Vigilante made a perfect Bitcoin watch. That's the perfect, subtle, elegant way to go out there and show that you are a Bitcoiner. And that watch brand is Bitcoin only. Make sure to check out the link in the description for this amazing Coin Vigilante timepieces. Those watches are amazing. I love them so much. It was really hard for me to pick the one that I want to have because there are a lot of great options. I went with the new transparency edition. They are all limited. So grab yours. Those will not be available for a long time, but there will come new models and new amazing designs along the way. Oh, that's interesting because uh, I think most always see it like there's first like the store of value has to completely proceed and then we move past to the medium of exchange. Why do you think that, that medium of exchange comes comes first? I mean, store of value is already yeah. here, but why do you think yeah. so? I think because it, I, I give them personal examples. So I, sh when a new person gets Bitcoin or when a new person hears about Bitcoin, one of the first things they say is, well, how do I buy groceries? With how do I spend it? How do I spend it? Right. And I don't think that's actually them trying to kind of like needle the Bitcoiner or like throw them off or saying that they don't believe or whatever. I think that's literally just, well, you're telling me that it's better money. The primary use case I have for money is to get things for my house. I'll do that money, but then tell me how it works. It's almost like a trust mechanism. Like, I'm, and I'm, I'm saying trust in like a neutral way. You're just like, you mentally have to close the loop of, this works from my main use case of getting something into my house. And so right now, the like the Bitcoin bucket and the fiat bucket are competing with each other effectively for people's direct deposit, like effectively your labor, because the, um, the work that people do that they're earning money for is like the scarce thing, right? And then everyone chooses, am I direct depositing to Bitcoin or am I direct depositing to like to USD? Am I storing my labor in Bitcoin or am I storing my labor, you know, in USD and closing the loop of being able to do day to day things on Bitcoin ups the amount of people that can up the amount of labor that they're storing in Bitcoin, which is why I don't see them as like separate things. Like, I don't think there's actually this like order of events of like, oh, store value, like, oh, and then medium exchange. And I would say, again, even if, even if. I kind of like concede that it has to happen in a certain order. It's not happening in a certain order for every single human on the planet at the exact same time. So there's people that are going to speed run through and speed run through, through all the things. And I think now, like if someone, I think that people are going to be able to download Bitcoin apps that take them to both immediately. And they're not, and they're not going to go through this like period of the like, chicken or the egg thing that a lot of us went through over the past you know six seven years do you also think that we we should spend our bitcoin doing in, increase uh adoption or is does it not matter like yeah so like what the short answer is yes like the short i will the short answer is like i'll answer yes the reason why i'm like hesitating a little bit is because the like should you do it to help it's like look people I'm a lot of times when people talk about the circular economy, they tell, they say that like, Oh, the Bitcoiner should do something that's like economically irrational in order to like get the adoption or whatever. I don't, I don't think that it's irrational to like quote unquote spend your Bitcoin. Like I think it's just simply using a different thing. Like you, you could pay with two different credit cards out of your wallet. Like if you're if, for this brewery example, if you're already going to buy three beers for $24, just in, even if you hadn't done anything, then simply buy $30 of Bitcoin before going in there and then use that as your method. Like, I guess, I don't know. I think I'm hesitant to say that people like should, like should do it for the adoption because I think it's economically like rational for the person in general, even in like the, the for the adoption part, I guess it's like a, a double benefit. It's like gravy, I guess. Wait, that's an interesting example of like buying Bitcoin directly before you 
um, buy things with Bitcoin because there is probably zero to no capital gains because <laughs> the, the capital gains yeah. will be very less. And if if there is a capital gains, like right. that's a benefit from the, you. So like if in that, I don't know, 30 minutes that you drank yep. the beer from like yep. getting the Bitcoin to drinking and the Bitcoin sh price shoots up 10%, you pay capital gains tax, but that's a, that's a positive thing. Uh, so that's interesting. No, exactly. And that's where, that's where I just, I think we overcomplicate a bit for a few years there. Like I think uh, OG Bitcoiners were great at talking about Bitcoin. They were not great at talking about personal finance. Like they, and, and that's what I'm trying to just like reset that whole thing and me and others, like tons of other, that's what I, that's my favorite thing about Bitcoin right now, whether it's YouTube or Twitter or whatever, is this whole chicken or the egg thing, almost the ice is thawing on all of that. Like it just is what it is. It is what it is. And you don't have to overthink it as much anymore, which I think is leading to faster and faster onboarding of, again, back to these like, quote unquote, regular people that I super care about. And so an example of that is this. So this bar that that takes Bitcoin, when when I was doing this four or five years ago at a different bar that took Bitcoin, our the bartender, we could tip her in Bitcoin for a new person to participate, they would have to. Uh, we would have to tell them the app, they'd have to download the app, they'd have to pass all the stuff, and they'd have to come back the next week, and then that's when they can participate. Now, uh, the bar takes Bitcoin, the ner the like hardcore people from the internet come, and they participate, and it already works. What we've also seen is that a few, I'll call them like normie adjacents, like people that are just already at the bar, they didn't come for the meetup, they already had a Coinbase account like on their phone, and they were also able to pay with Lightning from Coinbase. And so the fact that the bar, like that, the fact that it just worked means that the adoption is getting faster and faster and faster. And so now that person, the very first day that they were like, wow, you guys are here for Bitcoin. That's awesome. Like, da, 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 da. we didn't hit them with a the speech about like the savings technology versus the spending technology or whatever. We just hit them with the like, yes, we're here for Bitcoin. Bitcoin's here in this town and it's awesome. And then boom, they were able to participate with the like, mainstream app that they already have on their phone that's that's just proving that it's like moving faster and faster are, are we now at that like really critical s curve adoption uh point where we kind of filled all the buckets like uh we we have all we have already bars that are doing it we have etfs we have nations in yeah. there we have the individuals we have the publicly traded companies we, ha we have kind of all, all, all people already yep. in there and now we're just waiting to to get that s curve like do you think that we are not at that is like i think 10 percent adoption rate yeah so i don't know what the official number is i don't know where the official place on the s curve is but like is bitcoin mainstream absolutely like yeah i believe that bitcoin is mainstream i believe that everyone already has had their first, second, third touches with it, already has some sort of mental opinion about it. And the, like you have the hardcore people that have like felt an upside from it. It's dramatically improved their life. And then you have various people all the way down to where even the people, like we onboarded a guy that was just, he, his thing was just like, you know, honestly, like I'm, I'm just too busy. Like hadn't ever like actually tried it yet like actually hadn't been burned by any of the bad apps or any of the whatever. It just had like ridden it out the whole time, hadn't participated yet. And I was just like, dude, honestly, like you're already at a great time frame because it's all like you skipped a lot of the headaches. Like you skipped a lot of the headaches. And so it just is now. And so him participating, he's not going to be faced with the whole like, there, there is just, yeah, it's just mainstream. Like you said, all of that stuff where it's already happening. And now it's just another app on his phone that he's able to participate with. Absolutely. Really cool. The last question that I have on personal finance is uh, also credit related to the other way around. Um, when we now think of like, oh, I want to reach 0 0.21 Bitcoin. Um, we are now coming slowly to a bull run. I'm fearful that the Bitcoin price runs my purchasing power away and I'm not able to get to that point. Um, that doesn't make sense for you to, to take a credit out. To, in order to buy Bitcoin, not like against the Bitcoin, but to buy Bitcoin, uh, because you brought out also the real estate example of like the yeah. <laughs> real estate is so, yeah. uh, magical because you can actually do the leverage uh, game and you actually leverage from that a lot. Yeah. Um, so personally telling me to not give my main answer on this. So I'm going to give my main answer on this. Like, I think if I, if again, this is a very US centric answer. I love 0% balance credit card, uh, like offers. 
So I'm, I've personally used 0% balance like transfers for multiple things in my life over like multiple years. And so look, like if you're a person who has a great credit score, has demonstrated that you understand how to use credit like in your life, absolutely. I think like learning how to use from a personal finance perspective, learning how to use credit and easy to get credit and good priced credit in order to increase the amount of assets you own is like a really valuable skill to skill to like understand. Definitely. Uh, it's, uh, it's, I think even Safedin uh, mentioned it in his book in Fiat Standard or was kind of the conclusion to that because like Fiat is eroding so quickly that you can gain a lot from the fall of Fiat. It's kind of like a short against Fiat and a long mm -hmm. uh, in, in Bitcoin, which can be very beneficial. But yeah, as, as you said before, like it's a, it's, uh, it depends on, on your personal uh, situation and your finance. Yeah. Like it's, it's not for everyone. Um, you mentioned something before, uh, that you're like, Oh, we, we know that Bitcoin is superior philosophical. Um, yeah. wh why do you think uh, that is? And like, why are we in, uh, wh wh why are we so superior? Yeah, because yeah, be like, because humans aren't involved in the like supply decision because the, the, the fiat supply is decided by a group of insiders all the time. Like there's no, that's physically, physically how it works. And it's like the decision and all of the reasons around it. And even the way that the decision is released is physically gate kept. And with Bitcoin, the monetary supply is not. That's the like number one answer I get. Like that's the, when people are like, why is Bitcoin better than fiat? Because the supply is not tied to regular human politics, regular human insider versus outsider games. That's why it's like, That's why it's philosophically better. Yeah, even even it's it's not even uh, tied to to human incentives, what which I find uh, extremely amazing. Because like, if real estate prices uh, are going up the roof extremely, uh, then yep. people will be very very um, creative with uh, building real estate, like higher houses, uh, smaller yep. units, and all those things, like uh, making property that would only be for farming maybe into uh, bu uh, buying and uh, building and property and stuff like that there's a lot of there's a lot of land and a lot of space in the, on the earth left to, to explore and maybe also like then space travel and stuff like that and even with gold like people will be turning in their gold <laughs> that they have their jewelries yeah. and and digging up gold and the companies have more money to do that which is a really powerful Uh, thing that the Bitcoin like can shoot up tomorrow at, to like one million US dollars, and the supply doesn't move. <laughs> so right. Supply right. is what the supply is, is. That's that's an incredible underestimated thing. Uh, I think at least. No, agree. It still blows my mind. Like it still agree. It still blows my mind. Absolutely. And um, you, um, I think you were also uh, involved in, a, in in Bitcoin startups. Is that right? Uh, what was the last word? Uh, you were in, involved in, in Bitcoin startups, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I've, yeah, I've worked for Bitcoin startups since uh, 2019, um, a few different, different ones of them. And so, yeah, like being, and mainly what I'm focused on now today is like, I really want to kind of, one of the reasons why I'm thankful to be at Fold is because I think a lot of Bitcoiners need to understand the guts of like FinTech even more. And even like taking Bitcoin out of it for a second, the hurdles that kind of like fintechs have to go through in order to kind of quote unquote, like beat, beat the big banks is like a really, really like interesting kind of like startup thing to go through. And I don't think always users know all of that. And so that's my, uh, I don't know. That's just my main takeaway right now off the top of my head of like, yeah, being involved on the, the working for Bitcoin company side of it for, uh, for so many years. What did you learn uh, about Bitcoin from working in a, in a Bitcoin fintech uh, startup yeah. world? Yeah, I think that main thing I learned about Bitcoin from this, I think that maybe that, that everyone doesn't see Bitcoin the same way. Like, I think you, you intuitively know this, you intuitively know this, but when you're trying to make a Bitcoin app for the mainstream or when you're really trying to think about how other various groups of people see see bitcoin you have to learn how to kind of talk about it in multiple multiple different ways and so that's kind of my 
that's yeah, that's probably my main takeaway. Really interesting. Um, as you're also from from fintech and uh, um, real estate and all all, all those things. How do you think um, Bitcoin could or will uh, reshape the definition of wealth and, and being rich and being wealthy? Yeah, I think that, well, first off, I think Bitcoiners can learn a lot from like kind of looking at the way that current wealthy co like cohorts kind of already are or like already perform. How do I think Bitcoin is going to reshape that? I think this is maybe a very like cheesy answer, but, but I think it, it, a lot of people talk with the middle class, talk about like the wealth of the middle class or the top talk about, you know, the like lower upper class or whatever, and just kind of how like wealth inequality is just like spreading and spreading and spreading. Right. Like I think Bitcoin actually functionally solves the problem for the middle. It actually functionally solves the problem for the middle because like, like, You know, the term like a rising tide lifts all boats, like Bitcoin actually is that like because of all of the things that we know about it, the fixed supply, and, uh, like um, uncorruptibility and all those things. A person can now just work a regular job and not have to be constantly a top 1% investor or a top 10% investor in order to like outperform the kind of like fiat slippage that's happening all the time they can just do their thing and the money not sucking will like ha create this floor for them and so i think that's the number one thing that's going to kind of change that's what's going to change in the middle and then what's going to change at the top is what's going to change at the top is it's just going to churn out who's there it's going to churn out who's there because bitcoin is so superior to other forms of investment and other form like Unfortunately, other forms of being wealthy, like are tied to kind of these like insider outsider games, a lot of times, like a very high degree of kind of like who's in the top, top, top of the top comes to, with these insider outsider games. And so people that like enter that world through Bitcoin are now like a literally a different kind of like demographic than who's there right now. And so that's how I see kind of the top, top changing. And I see this like actual middle, middle class, like having influence. And uh, do you think the, the, the poor and the lower classes um, uh, will maybe even vanish because they will uprise to the middle class or will there always be that really bottom poor class? Yeah, yeah. Um, I hesitate, I mean, I hesitate to say that it'll be fully gone. I do, but obviously like for, for me to believe that it helps the middle, like it obviously can help all tiers. Like it can definitely help all tiers. And I mean, I for sure think Bitcoin, I don't know why this is where my brain's going, but like, you know, a lot of people buy lottery tickets. Like a lot of people just like spend dollar, five dollars, ten dollars at a time on lottery tickets. Like. Bitcoin is that is like it's like you could be like you're buying lottery tickets in slow motion like you're actually building equity in something so it's the same for it's the same kind of like emotional payoff like as a lottery but you're building equity in it and you're actually like stacking your like chances over time to like kind of grow and get a hold of something I, I love the lottery ticket comparison because I know Even in my life, I know people that are regularly buying lottery tickets, and I'm like, yeah. if you just put that money into Bitcoin, yeah. <laughs> the last years that you already did, you would be already way wealthier <laughs> yeah. and did not have yeah. to lose money. And I know it's yeah. not that much money I, and it's, it's not making a big difference. Well, that's, and that's a part of the problem. Like people, people that don't own assets, like the, the split is people that own assets versus people that don't own assets. Because fiat is functionally broken. Like, and that's the whole, again, we just pound the drum and pound the drum, but like fiat is functionally broken. Holding it does not increase in value. Holding it does not increase in purchasing power. And so you like, it is, it's not doing anything for you. Like, so the fact that you can own, buy, acquire a dollar of Bitcoin at a time and get a hold of something a little more tangible, there's not... There's nothing else available for a dollar at a time 
that is tangibly on any sort of growth direct, like trajectory. Even like even take all like even take all of the kind of like hard money like macroeconomic stuff out of it for a second. Just like like there's there's I don't know what else can you acquire for a dollar that is on any sort of network effect growth projecting in the world. There's nothing. That's nothing. Yeah, I, that's an amazing way to look at it. It 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 it, it shifts the perspective away. Where we're like, oh, lottery, yeah, you, you might win something, but your chances are so, 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 mm -hmm. so slim that you are almost guaranteed to lose. And in Bitcoin, you are almost guaranteed to win. Like, it's like, yeah. why do you choose the lottery ticket? It's like a losing, lo lo losing thing to do. It's it's really uh, cool to think yeah. about that. And you're not playing alone. Like, you're not playing alone. It's not you versus the other people in the pool. That's the that's the other problem with lotteries is it's you versus the other people in the pool. There can only be one winner. Like Bitcoin, there isn't only one winner. Like it's literally, it's literally people choosing that Bitcoin is better than fiat money. And you're all like, that's what, that's what I love about it is that there, there's no single, there's also, again, no single way to kind of like improve your life and also be like contributing towards a broader societal like improvement than Bitcoin. That's a big thing. Um, once you adopt Bitcoin, everyone is working for you. Every Bitcoiner mm -hmm. is all of a sudden working for you. If uh, if Michael Saylor acquires more Bitcoin because he has done good in his business, that's good for every Bitcoiner. Yeah. If you do something that that it brings value to your life and you stay, save that value in Bitcoin, this benefit uh, every uh, every Bitcoiner benefits from that. That's a big thing uh, that I think a lot of people don't really think about what that can also do to society when all of a sudden everyone uses that Bitcoin because now we also have yep. this nation thing going on like Eurozone, the BRICS, there's China, there is the US and yeah, yep. of course, um, if if the US pe people work together, the US people benefit from having companies like Google there, having companies like Amazon there. But what if the whole world doesn't have fiat currencies, like 50 different fiat currencies, but have one Bitcoin standard? And a, a, someone in Nigeria benefits a lot if there's a really nice company in, in Sweden because it benefits whole society. I think that's yeah. a really interesting topic. What, what do you think that, could that do to the society at large? Yeah, I mean, I think it... Yeah, it like it changes the game. It changes the game again. Instead of instead of the success, you know, floating to like the small group of people that choose the rules of each of the like each of those fiat currencies is a network. Each of those fiat currencies is a network. And again, you're right. They are they're trying they're competing against each other. They're attracting companies, attracting individuals. And if you choose to join that network, you're benefiting the insiders in that network. But if there was a global open source network where everyone was contributing together and there was no leakage, like there's, there's no leakage where the, you know, cut of it is like you, where your productivity is getting like shaved off and shaved off. And just that in and of itself, you're going to feel wealthier. Absolutely. Um, we are already coming to closer to the end routine. I have one question that I ask all my, my podcast guests, uh, and I'm really curious about what you're saying about that. Um, what can we learn from you besides all the things that you already talked about? Yeah. Yeah. The, the main thing that I enjoy talking about the most is regular people. Like the, the number one thing I like the most is regular people can participate in Bitcoin right now. Bitcoin is happening right now in real time. It's not a vague thing that's happening in the future. It's physically happening right now. And you're able to adopt it to whatever degree you want, you know, kind of right now. And then also, I think kind of like thinking about yourself as a person of influence like if you if you've already listened to all the bitcoin podcasts understand all of the stuff like heard it all before i think r like really start to think about you kind of like your place in it sounds so cheesy to say like changing the world but y like your place in being an influential person in the world and that doesn't have to look like traditional politics it doesn't have to look like 
You know, it doesn't, it can be anything that can literally mean anything that can, that can honestly just mean networking within your town. Like, I think you are like people knowing your name, knowing that you've kind of like made positive financial decisions. I, I, I just think that the, that's going to make the Bitcoin kind of like standard, I guess, like happen even faster because you as a person are really influential. That's an interesting thing because uh, I talked a lot about on a space with uh, with a group, uh, how do orange build people? And my standpoint was when you as a person are as positive and happy and uh, am, like trained and you, you, you do good in life and you just like uh, are giving and your society is like, oh, like he's a nice one. Like yeah. he, he's giving to the society. That's the number one thing how you can orange build people. If you are successful and happy and giving, people will notice that. And if you tell them, like, yeah, I'm living on a Bitcoin standard, of course, like what else should you yeah. do? That alone is orange building people because then uh, someone that has Bitcoin is associated with these positive things and not someone that has his life not together. That's why I also think it's very powerful that we in Bitcoin talk so much about diets. So talk so much about mm -hmm. working out, so, uh, so, so, so much about having a positive uh, and, and good life for each other because that's actually also... Um, putting uh, the Bitcoin adoption forward because totally. people see like, oh, Bitcoin are like, oh, he's fit. He is, is, he's doing good. Like he's a disciplined person. He's a giving person. So that's a, that's a very interesting uh, point that you also uh, raised in there. Really cool. Um, yeah. And for the end routine, we have uh, always where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest uh, without knowing who the next guest actually is. Uh, really cool end routine. Um, the previous guest asked, when Bitcoin hits 1 million, what would you buy? <laughs> I love that. Uh, okay, I have to, I'm having to think about what my question is going to be for the next person while I'm, while I'm thinking about this. The, when Bitcoin exchange rate is a million dollars USD fiat versus one Bitcoin, probably probably going back to my real estate answer, like another, like another house, like another pretty nice house is definitely what I'm going to be doing um, at that level. Uh, another thing would be probably, uh, probably like, uh, probably a bar or restaurant too. Like I'm definitely a little bit of a romantic, like romantic for that. Like, I just love meetups. Like I like Bitcoin meetups. I like the idea of small businesses. And so definitely either like real estate or a small business. It could, could be um, uh, both like a, a, a small small uh, um, bar where you buy the real estate yeah. and then yes. you have the small business inside like that could be combined. A hundred percent. No, a hundred percent. Because then I would just blast the address everywhere and we're just like growing equity in that space. A hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, true. That uh, would be a good, yeah. uh, good fit. Um, perfect. Yeah. And yeah, thank you so much, uh, Brian, for being on. Thank you so much for taking the time. Um, where, uh, before I let you go, where can people find you? Where can people ask you questions? Yeah. Yeah. So if you're already watching on YouTube, like, uh, please subscribe, like for this channel, then search Brian Harrington and search fold app and would love your just subscriptions and traffic on both of those Brian Harrington and fold app. And then if you're on Twitter, my Twitter is brain Harrington, like in your head, brain Harrington. And you can send me DMs on there. Uh, love talking to people. Amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time. Also, thank you so much for everyone that is listening and watching for joining us today. As always, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye.